So here we are, QE1, season 22, 23, down at River Farm Fisheries. Uh, we've just set the pegs out now. So we've gone for exactly the same layout, one through to 14, exactly how they are set up for the fishery, because um, we're expecting 14 anglers. Um, we've obviously, you can only fish at the halfway point. So it's going to be a little bit tricky for the people that get these uh, pegs in the shallows. You've got about five and a half wraps. So yeah, we've set up. Um, we're going to do the walk around shortly. Then we'll go into the draw, um, followed by a bit of setting up for an hour or so. And then it'll be rods in 10 o'clock. And hopefully first fish 10 past. We'll see. I came out around um, halfway through the draw. I managed to get uh, peg six. Um, so not, not quite where I wanted to be, but it was high up on my list. So yeah, peg six. I got a little tree just in front of me, which I'll show you shortly. And um, I got about 13, 13 and a half wraps of water out in front of me as well. So that's all good. Um, set up now because it was a little bit raining so I didn't really film that that much but yeah third time lucky on this venue for me personally so hopefully I can redeem myself there has been a species come out already which was an eel so about well not even an hour in what is it yeah 40 minutes in now so that happened probably 10 minutes ago um, 10 minutes ago an eel came out and uh, he wasn't best pleased he, as he thought he was into a carp but yeah onwards and upwards there's plenty out there anyway. So, the biscuits we've got today. Dark chocolate butter biscuits. And fruit and nut cookies. With a cup of decaf coffee. Right, let's get into it then. Right, well, here we go. Start off with the dark chocolate butter biscuits. So let's talk about the biscuit to chocolate ratio, which everyone was absolutely, was like, do you know what? I've, I've thought about that before, but not some, maybe not so much about the biscuits, but definitely on like pasta and sauce and stuff. So yeah, let's have a look at this one then. So straight away, nice biscuit big slab of chocolate on top so let's try it without the brew now so the chocolate isn't as thick as it first looks which is good biscuit's got a good crunch to it um, now let's try and dunk it I got asked a few about that maybe I should include some dunkability testing so here we go I'm just going to go for one dunk and out. Very good. The chocolate stops the, the brew absorbing on both sides so the biscuit doesn't actually get too soggy. Yeah, that's a good biscuit that is. However, you only get nine in a pack which is the downside because if I had just this pack for the two days that'd be gone moving on then the fruit and nut cookie with a chocolate layer on so fruit and nut not everyone's favorite I thought you know I'd try something different rather than just chocolate and chocolate right let's get them out so straight away same again you only get eight biscuits so that's why I bought two packs cookie one side chocolate and that and the other. Not only picked a good one there. Yeah, there's a bit more fruit in that one. Let's try it. I, I, I think this is going to be crumbly. Not too bad. Having fruit and nut definitely gives it a different tang. Now let's try and dunk it. So again, a couple of seconds. I don't think you'd want to go more than a few seconds. That was a bit quite soggy then. Mm. So, we'll try and give them a rare 
one to five on biscuit to chocolate ratio or the ratio and then one to five on dunkability shall we say so again the butter biscuit dark chocolate butter biscuit i'd say biscuit to chocolate ratio is pretty good so we're going to give that i'm going to give that a four i don't really know what a five is yet it's going to be out there somewhere but we'll give this a four and the dunkability actually i'm going to i'm going to do that test one more time but this time hold it in for longer That's about 10 seconds, so. So that time the biscuit went soggy, but the chocolate kept it together. So I think you could get a really good dunk on with that. I might even go and give that a four and a half as well. The butter biscuit has scored eight and a half, I'd say. Yeah, let's do with the cookies. So the ratio, I'd say slightly off, because you've got a lot of big thick cookie, but literally just a, a little dip in the chocolate. And you can almost see the biscuit coming through the chocolate. So I'd rather have a bit more chocolate on there. So I'd probably give that, you know, maybe a, a two, because you don't want to be seeing the biscuit coming through. So it's not even properly layered. So I'd give that a two. And for dunkability, as we mentioned before, you wouldn't want to go very far over um, a couple of seconds but I'm going to do that now I'm going to hold it in for 10 seconds so we can compare it and we'll give it a score so that was around 10 seconds let's see what this is like so yeah as you've seen almost risky biting it so yeah quite soggy and the chocolate didn't keep the structure of the biscuit essentially so if you have held it that way it probably snapped but 10 seconds is not bad for a biscuit so i'm going to give that i'm going to give that free so the cookie excuse me scores are free sorry 5.5 overall and the dark chocolate butter biscuit scores an 8.5 so would recommend a butter biscuit and these are not even the best quality ones these are from Lidl there's better ones out there 8.5 just remember that more make sure you like and subscribe to the channel for more carpy adventures well I've just cracked off so I wrapped my rod up 13 wraps sorted and sorted the rig out and I'll tell you about the rig in a minute I sorted all that out a few few of the other lads watching on the other side of the bank go to cast out straight away I only looked down and realised I hadn't flicked the uh, bell arm over. So it's 110% my fault. It is it is what it is. Uh, however, I have gone on. Everyone's fishing on the bottom, I think. So I've gone on a little three foot zig, you know, seeing if um, seeing if that can get a get a winkle of fish out so early on. I've gone with, um, oh, what is it? Carp Freak's pink pop-up smell really fruity so it should be good for this time of year so yeah we'll give it a little try a little 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 pop up whittled down slightly oh yeah come on it, the weather's just absolutely devastating 
Um, it's probably been raining now for the best part of two hours. Um, there's been two fish come out. Uh, Rev next to me in peg five has had a 24 pound common and Ollie across from us in peg eight has had a seven pound uh, common as well. So yeah, two fish so far across the whole um, across the whole lake. So not fishing the best, but this rain seems, you know, two have come out in the rain, so it's looking promising. Um, I've got nothing else to do apart from cook some burgers. As you do, burgers is nice and easy. So yeah, that's the update going tonight. When you cook these burgers, redo my margin rod, just change it, tweak the hook bit slightly. It's been on a match the hatch all day, uh, match the hatch snowman. So now I'm just going to change it over and hopefully that can produce a, a bite during the night. Top up the top up the bit and then just settle down. Probably watch a bit of YouTube, a bit of Netflix maybe, and hopefully one rips off during the night. We'll see. And here we have cheeseburger. So what we've got is a bun. The bottom half of the bun, garlic mayonnaise, burger, cheese, barbecue sauce, then the bun. Let's do this. Oh yeah! Absolute beauty of a common. 23 pound on the dot. Out there on a um, pink topped um, Pacific tuna actually. Yeah, left it out in the middle most of the day getting liners and then all of a sudden ripped off absolutely buzzing it's only it's only 10 to 9 as well so plenty of time to get some more come on let's put it back there we go exactly one hour later another fish 23 and a half pound exactly the same method i'll show you the rig and the hook baits i'm using hopefully it carries on through the night i don't mind having a sleepless night let's get it back Good morning. As you can see, nothing really happened for me through the night, other than them two, um, up to about 10 o'clock. Um, the odd bleep on the rod here and there. Um, so we think that might be a, a feeding window down here in the deeper water. That means between eight and 10 o'clock at night. So fingers crossed we can get a few more out tonight. We're not even halfway through the match yet, so that's good. Lee next door to me had a fish at 29.12. Ollie across from me this morning has had one at 27 and a few inches, I'm not sure. And then Lee also missed one this morning. So the bite time windows, as they know, as they normally are, it's just find out the, the timings. So probably from about six o'clock to eight o'clock in the morning, then eight o'clock ish to about 10 o'clock at night. But yeah, gonna have finished my cup of tea, but get some food on. Um, I'm currently sat in first place with 46 and a half pounds of fish so hopefully get a couple more um, tonight and just put me just out of reach and get a bag of win just before Christmas that'd be nice. variations first one is the illusion d rig as you can see on an actual d i think it's a 15 mil um pacific tuna pop-up chopped slightly with um topped with some pink sweet corn so yeah this is the rig that's been doing all the business if i can just show you so that's the rig that's been doing all the business. If you follow me on any social media, have you watched any other videos, you'll know that this is the rig that I've been using all summer. It's been absolutely nailing fish. So that's one variation. 
and then this is the next variation so very similar illusion um pretty much boom section let's say and then into just um a micro swivel straight onto the hook shank as you can see there with a bead so you know similar to a, a spinner rig but however it doesn't spin so just straight onto the shank rather than the d and again both both rigs have done fish already these are just baited ready to go and what i'm feeding is um little mesh chop um boilies literally just hook you just give a give yourself a longer tag end onto the hook capture the the um almost like the hair let's say and then back through and then that is now ready to be cast out so the hooks that i'm using uh i think they're a size six let me just have a look so the hooks that i'm using are stiff rigged beak size four micro barbed haven't lost me a fish haven't had a hook pull i mean i've used the same rig now for probably two three sessions maybe even four sessions hook point still good not done any other sharpening so yeah well worth it i did use kamakura hooks um however slightly expensive and you know once you've had maybe one or two fish the hook point's no good and i haven't tried sharpening them but these are absolutely uh, unbelievable that's the rigs i'm using illusion d and something similar um pacific tuna chop boily topped with some pink corn um that's doing the business right now well as i said you'd only see me if i caught something else however i obviously didn't catch anything else um and i'm home now i've aired the bivy out sorted some stuff out and yeah just thought i'd let you all know that i ended up winning the session or should i say the qualifying event so that's good so that was an army qualifier so that qualifies me now to fish in the army um match towards it i think it's like at the end of the season um have a chance of becoming top rod and uh, another shot at getting into the army team which i just missed out on on the last um, match that i did so fingers crossed i can have a good season stay consistent and get in the army team let's see what happens there.